welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of is glossier still worth it i am so excited to get this video out for y'all i know some of you have been waiting for it i'll go through each of the makeup items as i am getting ready i will let you know my experiences with them throughout the past two and a half years that i have owned these items all of my opinions are just that they are my opinions you are totally welcome to disagree with me i really encourage leaving comments down below if there's a certain item that you loved and I didn't particularly like because I think that everyone can learn something from someone else. With that said, thank you everyone so, so much for a thousand subscribers. I just hit that milestone last week and it was the most wonderful feeling. I cannot thank y'all enough. Once I get my shit together, I will find a way to show y'all how much I appreciate this. I did a full face of Glossier that is what is on my face right now the perfecting skin tint. I have all of my products in the color G9. I do not like this product. I do not think it's worth it. It's perfect to even out someone's skin if they already have perfect skin, which I can see it working for a lot of people, especially younger girls who haven't had acne issues yet. My issue with it is that it's sticky. I just don't like how it feels. Like it's just always there. It's never really settled. My face gets so oily at the end End of the day when I wear it. I don't know why it just doesn't work with my skin. I have pretty dry skin for most of my face and then I have an oily t-zone but when I wear the perfecting skin tint I feel oily in random spots in my forehead very much so in the corners of my nose. I don't think that I would be repurchasing it. It's just not really a game-changing product for me. The Glossier Stretch Concealer. I did mention this one in my last everyday makeup routine video. I love this product as a foundation. Don't like it as a concealer. It does not give me enough coverage under my eye areas. The formula is just so wonderful. It's this light to medium coverage. It's super blendable. I just repurchased it a couple months ago because I ran out and I did not want to use anything else as my foundation. It's actually the perfect light to medium foundation for me. It has a dewy to satin finish. I really, really like the stretch concealer the solar paint. I have the color heat on this side right now and I have the color ray on this side. I typically use the color heat to do the cheeks and under my chin contour, ray to contour my nose and it works amazingly. I actually really like how it contours so I'm gonna say that this is worth it. It's really unlike anything I've ever used before. It has a little bit of shimmer in it. It's just a really pretty product for the summertime especially. It gives you a very nice natural glow Low. Originally, I only had Ray and it was a little light for my contour area. It has more of a warm undertone. When I used it to contour my chin, it looked kind of orange, whereas Heat has more of a red-brown undertone. They last pretty long throughout the day. Very unique product. I think they're worth it. Cloud paints are absolutely worth it. With some notes to say, the colors that I have are Storm, Puff, Beam, and Dusk. I use Beam and Puff the most. It's just a pink and a nice peach. Storm, I don't use too much because it's a little dark. And Dusk, I kind of rarely touch. To me, it's this in-between color, like a blush slash bronzer color. I've only used it a couple times because I usually do put blush on and bronzer. There's never a need for me to just do the two-in-one type of deal. I don't really like the packaging on this. I always deposit out way more than I need. It becomes a mess under the lid. As someone who really enjoys painting, it's so fun to play with, especially using my fingers to put it on my cheeks. I don't use other tools typically. I love just patting it on as if I'm finger painting. It lasts all day because it is this liquidy to cream to powder blush. I think it's totally worth it. I use the Brow Flick in the color black. Love the Brow Flick. It is totally worth it. I have repurchased this time and time again. I have used the Kat Von D one, which is terrible. I haven't tried the Lime Crime one yet, but I have tried the NYX one. And the Glossier one, the formula is so good. It does not budge throughout the day. My only critique about it is the brush is a little bit large. I don't think that it gives fine enough strokes, especially if it's trying to mimic your natural 
brow hairs more resembles the tip of a eyeliner. I just don't think that that's great, especially when you're trying to make fine strokes. That's my one critique. I wish that the tip was a little bit finer. After that, I went in with the Boy Brow. I also really, really love this product. I think it's totally worth it. The black one is too dark for the eyebrow look that I'm going for. So I like to use the brown one after I am done drawing in the hairs. It just evens things out perfectly. Love the formula. It's more of a waxy type texture. Unlike the clear brow gel or other brow gels I've used, the e.l.f. one's really good, but it's just not the same waxy consistency. It doesn't make my eyebrows feel as fluffy and filled in. The boy brow is very, very nice for doing that. While it doesn't have the best hold, like Anastasia Clear Brow Gel, I think that it has a good enough hold that if I just needed to wear it by itself, I would feel comfortable doing that. I won't go into too much detail about these because my first YouTube video ever was on my old channel and it is a complete review of these. So if you want to see that, I will link it right there. I will let y'all know that I think that these are worth it. When I first got them, I was using them for a long time by themselves. It makes it very easy to pack on one color, throw eyeliner on over it. Glossier really prides themselves in being a company that makes it easy to apply makeup, make things effortless. I definitely think that this is one of the products that allows you to just throw stuff on your face and go. I use Echo and Terra a lot. I love the brown color. I love the warm terracotta color. I also really enjoy Pool and Lawn because they are such unique colors. That cornflower blue and that green is just beautiful. The other colors I don't reach for too much. I wouldn't really recommend those lighter colors, especially if they're getting close to your skin tone. They just don't really do anything. Formulation is great. I have tried other liquid shadows before. Off the top of my head, I'm comparing it to the Stila one, and the Stila one is so patchy. Not the glitters, the just normal liquid shadows from Stila. These are much better. They go on wet, but they dry down to a really nice powder. They're easy to manipulate. They're not as good as the Rare Beauty ones. The Rare Beauty one is just perfect. I will say that, but I do think that all in all they are worth it. I purchased the one in Prairie and I also got the double-ended brush duo. I do not think that this is worth it. I think that it's a huge miss. The formula is pretty good. It's creamy, it's buttery, it's nice. I don't understand why they didn't put four colors in it. I think it's a little gimmicky because of the removable mirror. At first I was like, oh, that's so cool. And then I was like, I never removed it ever for anything. And if someone was like, hey, do you have a mirror? I would probably just give them the whole palette to look at. I don't know. I know that's a little harsh. Some people might really love it and by all means you do you. That's just my opinion. Same with the brush. It's just whatever. I have other brushes that I really like. This one didn't do anything special. I used the single one. Put that all over my lid and I honestly feel like the metallic one and the shimmer one are very close. They're not too different. I get that it's supposed to be a quick grab and go, put it on, walk out the door palette. But also e.l.f. makes these cute little quad palettes that are five bucks and the color selection is just way better and they're so adorable. I don't know, I feel like there are better products out there. Totally sorry if you love the monochromes. After that, I went in to the corner of my eyes with the Lid Star in the color Moon. I really like the Lid Stars. I'm gonna say that they're worth it because I really enjoy using them. I love having these little bottles of sparkly creams that I can just use as highlighters or in the corners or just as toppers. And I think that they're a really unique product in that sense. So I really love my Lid Stars. Are they the best formula? Meh. They're not like the steel glitters or anything. They're just okay. But for the packaging, it's super cute, the convenience, and I really like the shimmer colors. I'm gonna say they're worth it enough to give a try. I do love using them as highlighters sometimes. I will just pat them on my cheeks or on my nose. Maybe buy one or two. I'll let you know my favorite ones right here. My eyeshadow looks a little wonky. I really tried to incorporate all three of those products. My apologies there. But you get the idea of how they apply, hopefully. 
I don't think this eyeliner is worth it. I know it is Olivia Rodrigo's favorite, but I think that there are much better eyeliners and formulas out there. It's very small for the amount that you pay. I mean, it's very black. I'll give it that. I love a nice dark black eyeliner, but I have worn it on many occasions and I do have oilier eyelids and it has not hold up. I'm not a fan of this eyeliner. Oh gosh. And same with the lash slick. I don't think that this mascara is worth it. It's a tubing mascara, which I love tubing mascaras. I don't think I'll ever go back to using a non-tubing mascara. This one barely does anything. It is such a natural look that if you don't already have amazing eyelashes, I just feel like it won't do much for you. I have very straight, thin Asian eyelashes, so it doesn't do much for me. Pros, I do like that my eyelashes can continue to feel soft after application and I like how much separation the brush gives to my eyelashes so they don't look super clumpy but with that said it's such a natural look it's so light honestly just go for the Thrive Cosmetics one go for the Hourglass one if you're gonna get a tubing mascara I'd say skip this one I don't think it's worth it and also the brush head because it's so good at separating it is very pokey and it reminds me a lot of the benefit it was that super freaking pokey wand. I love that mascara, but I hated putting it on because it just poked me. And that's how the Lash Slick mascara wand feels to me. The Wowder. So firstly, I'll let you know that I did not purchase the brush because I didn't find that it was anything special. Is it my favorite powder? No. Do I think that it is worth trying? Yes. So I'm gonna say it's worth it. I think that it gives a very nice natural finish. It is more matte leaning for sure. I love the packaging. The jar is very cute and the netting makes it so easy to get powder. It does not make a mess or anything, but I almost feel like the actual powder itself is not fine enough for my liking. I'm used to very fine powders, especially when they're finishing powders, but I also love that it is colored because I want that extra color in addition to my finishing powder. I don't think that I will be repurchasing it right away. I think I'm gonna try to find other finishing powders that have a little bit of a colored tint and see if they're any better. It hasn't done me any wrong. It's kept my face very Matte. I think because of the netting, I use up way less product than I normally would. I've had this Wowder for a really long time and I still have like half of it left. Again, it's not special, but it's just the right product if you want something fast that works. For Halo Scope, I do have the color Moonstone and that is what I used as a highlighter. I think that it makes a beautiful highlighter, but I do not think that it is worth it because it never really sinks into your skin. It just kind of sits on top of it, which is why it works so great as a highlighter and it looks dewy all day, but that's because it never sinks in. I always feel like my skin is a little sticky or greasy because of this specific product. There are much better highlighters out there that give you a really nice shine that don't make you feel very greasy. The one that I use is Moonstone and I've had the other ones before and I've given them away since I've gotten them. I'd pass on this. I think the Balm.coms are worth it. They are just great little chapsticks that you can throw in your bag. While I think they're worth it, there are some cons to it that are worth mentioning. The packaging, although it is so cute, it is very susceptible to ripping. I don't really like the idea of having to squeeze it out and apply it with my hands. The product is great. I think it's very nourishing. It doesn't leave my lips feeling sticky. It doesn't leave them feeling dry or anything. I do have to reapply it more often than other lip balms. I actually had all of them. I'm very excited to get the lavender one. Fig is my favorite, but it is discontinued. There has been enough hype around it that I think Glossier will bring it back. That's just my assumption the Generation G's are so worth it. I think that it is the best matte lipstick formula I've ever tried, especially since it is sheer and buildable. My favorite color is Cake and Leo. Those are such beautiful colors. They do feel dry, but they don't dry out my lips. I don't feel like they are contributors behind flaky or crusty lips, but they don't feel nourishing. So I hope that makes sense. The other colors are really pretty as well. They're really easy to wear 
wear because you can build it up or wear just one coat. I don't like wearing a lot of crazy colors. I usually go with more brown, red, neutrals, but the Generation G lipsticks are really good and they make it really easy to just throw on and not worry too much about if it looks too bold. So I really, really enjoy it. I think that it's totally worth your money. The Ultra Lips I also think are worth it. They draw a lot of attention to your face. I wanted to go with very natural colors, so I went with Cachette, Trench, Ember, and Vila. I also love that they are so lightweight and buildable. They just don't feel like a normal lipstick. I love the Ultra Lips. I love the Generation Gs. They are by far my favorite lipsticks. It hasn't really made sense to wear lipstick in the past couple years, so I've started wearing a lot of tinted lip balms, but now getting back into wearing lipstick, I just don't want to do it. With these, I really like putting them on. They're buildable, they're lightweight, and the ultra lips are super nourishing. I really feel there is a good amount of oils in this lip product. My lips don't feel chapped or dried out from it at all the lip gloss. This is gonna be very subjective because I don't like sticky lip glosses. Although Glossier's lip gloss is one of the least sticky lip glosses I've tried, it's not not sticky. I have a cat who sheds a lot and a pug who is on his way there and I get little hairs everywhere. They are in the air flying. Sometimes they'll just stick. It is the most irritating thing in the world to just have to pick these hairs off of my lips. There's one right there. <laughs> With that said, the Glossier Lip Gloss has an incredible shine to it. It looks so plump, but it's still sticky. There are other options out there that I personally enjoy much more, but if you are a sticky lip gloss person, this one is really good. Before I end the video, I want to give some updates on a couple products that I mentioned in part one. I did end up picking up this water bottle and no regrets at all. It is so gorgeous. I keep it by my bedside and it's perfect for taking my evening pills. It's beautiful. I am so glad that I got it. I love it. I also picked up the full version of the cleanser concentrate and I really love this too. I started a new birth control and my acne has gotten so much better. So I don't want to say that it's because of this, but my pores have also gotten noticeably smaller. I want to say it is because of this. Worth it ran out of my e.l.f. Happy Hydration Cream, so I picked up the Glossier Priming Moisturizer Rich. Oh my god. I love the lavender smell and I love how thick it is and it just feels so nice to put on my face before bed. I'm really glad that I got the full size. Every single time I ran out of the samples, I would just order more as a sample to make sure I really liked it and then use it and then do that again. So I'm glad I have the full size now. I did get the Body Hero Dry Touch Oil Mist, and now I'm gonna say that I don't think this is worth it because of this freaking nozzle or this packaging. The smell is nice and everything, but the glass is very hard to grip onto, especially when you spray it once, set it down, rub it in, and hold it again. It makes it even harder to spray this nozzle. I just wish that it came with a different type of sprayer, those like squirt bottle sprayers or something. This one just doesn't work too well, so. I don't reach for it, although the product is really nice. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you all. If you haven't already subscribed and you're interested in doing so, feel free. I would love to have you as part of this community. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment box down below. I try my best to answer all the questions that I can. If you are a first time purchaser of Glossier, I will have a link in my description box below for you to get 10% off of your first purchase. I just wanted to thank everyone so much for tuning in and supporting my channel. I hope you all have a lovely day. I'm sorry about the crazy lighting changes today. These clouds are moving at lightning speed. <laughs> I will see you in the next one. Bye.